Hey guys, welcome to today's video. We are going to be discussing primers that did not work out for me and I cannot believe that so many in a row just did not make me feel good about my skin. And I'm really picky. I know what works for me. I know what a good skin day looks like. And I may be a bit of a perfectionist. I mean, maybe more than just a bit. I'm a total perfectionist. I want my skin to look the very, very best that it can. And I'm a big, big believer of priming different areas of your face. So you guys know I usually prime with like a lifting, firming, moisturizing primer, basically on the perimeter of my skin. In. And then I do enjoy taking a pore filling primer right in here because I feel like I do have larger pores through here. I had very acne prone skin as a teenager and I just feel like my oil glands, like, like your pores don't change size. Like they just really don't. You're kind of born with what you're born. And if you exfoliate, keep them clean visually on the surface, they look smaller, but your pores are your pores. Long story short, once upon a time, I had a very, very oily skin and that's just like my skin type. But as I have gotten older, I have drier skin, but I still want to like cover those pores up. You know what I'm saying? So I do two primers. I hope that explains a little bit of my extraness with primers. Mm. Can I say primers like 5,000 times? Primers, 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 primers. So I had this idea to do a primer try on situation where I used a different primer every single day underneath the same foundation. And I would really figure out what worked and what didn't work. And I did that a few times just because I was super curious about a lot of what is in front of me and I didn't film it. So I was like experimenting with different primers underneath my normal foundation and just nothing was looking good. So in my mind, I was like, scrap that idea. We're not gonna like film every single time. We're just gonna sit down and we're gonna spill the tea on bad primers. Oh my gosh. I always feel so weird when I say stuff like that. Like, am I allowed to say like the catchphrases of spilling the tea? I kind of feel like Ugh. my family probably watches and they're like, would you stop it? Like you don't talk like that. But you know what? I think because I've been on Twitter and YouTube for so long now, I kind of pick up the language and I find myself saying these things. So yes, I'm going to spill the tea on bad primers. Let's start at the very beginning. All right, real talk. I took Benadryl last night for my eye situation that is still red from the lash extensions. And I usually don't take anything, you guys. Like I take my supplements, I take my halo every day, but uh, I do not like taking even like ibuprofen. Like I just feel like it's hard on my stomach. It's hard on my system. And I took Benadryl last night, you guys. I feel awful. My brain feels weird. Does anyone else get that from Benadryl? Ew, gross. I'm not taking that again. Yuck. So I have mentioned this on my channel a couple of times. I really, really, really wanted to give it a good go and figure it out. And I kind of was like, maybe you're working, maybe you're not. Maybe it's just the foundation. Maybe it's that it's like too hot outside. I gave this one enough chances and I don't like it and it is not worth the price. So this is from Guerlain, I know. Everybody's like, oh, oh, Guerlain. Because Guerlain is like my holy grail primer. I love the gold primer right here so much. I really feel like it firms your skin. And beyond that, it moisturizes your skin and it really just allows the foundation to just like glide right on. And oh, I just think this is such a good primer. So I love that. And of course I'm like, oh, it's Guerlain. Like let's get some more Guerlain. And this just did not work out at all. It says that it is a smoothing and blurring pore refiner. It's mattifying. It just does not work. It's not thick enough to blur anything. It just kind of like, goes in a little bit like a lotion. It's pretty liquidy. And then it's like, okay, cute, you're done. Didn't really do much. So Guerlain, love your gold. This one did not work out so great for me. And actually this is not rated very well on Sephora. I was kind of digging around and I'm not the only person that feels this way about this primer. Okay, moving on. Tarte just brought out a brand new hydrating primer. Oh my gosh, I just realized, and I'm not doing this on purpose at all. So my two like holy grail primers are Tarte and Guerlain. I'm actually wearing both of them today. And this right here is the Clean Slate Timeless Pore Filling Primer. I've talked about that 5,000 times on my channel. And I got this in PR and I tried it straight away. <sighs> it's gel-like, it kind of feels 
just like a gel moisturizer that more oily skin would use where it's very lightweight, sinks in the skin pretty quickly, but it just doesn't really do much else. So if you have drier skin and you really want that extra oomph, it just doesn't give you enough in my opinion. So it was odd for me that I didn't like it because I normally like a good extra zhuzh of moisture and then the pore fill. It wasn't awful, awful, but nothing that I would get super excited about. And a few of you have been asking about this one right here and I just, I don't like it. This one is on my crappy list. I do not get this primer. And in fact, I don't get primers like this at all. And there are plenty of companies that make this kind of a product and it's sold heavily as like an anti-aging filling, wrinkle blurring type of a thing. This is from Estee Lauder. And this is the Perfectionist Pro Instant Wrinkle Filler. Now this will fill in your wrinkles. I tried this out specifically with my crow's feet because sometimes I get like a little bit of concealer will be here from smiling. And Whatnot. You can try it underneath the eyes, in between the forehead, just basically any area that you want, not just a pore fill, but you want that extra like fill. Like you wanna make everything just like perfect. Like if you were painting a room and you were like sanding and priming and like getting everything even, like all the ridges filled in and then you could go over with your paint. Like that's basically what you're doing with your face with primers. So this one right here, my issue with it, A, is it's $54 and it's nothing that you're putting everywhere. You are literally just like spot correcting. The second issue is I already used two primers as is. I don't need a third. So it's just like another step. Like, is this really necessary? necessary. It doesn't do enough to warrant that extra step in my opinion. And ultimately the number one reason that I'm not a fan of this particular product is because it makes your concealer and foundation kind of stick in a tacky way. If you use even like the tiniest bit of too much product, like I've had it work occasionally. And I've also had it where it kind of pills up and brings more attention to the area that you're trying to bring less attention to. So this can backfire on you pretty quickly if you use too much, if you don't blend it in the right way. And I just think that's dangerous. You're gonna have more bad skin days than good skin days. It's an extra step, it's expensive, and it doesn't even do that much. So it's a pass for me. I'm not a fan of that one. I am a fan of this one though. Like, let me give Estee Lauder just like a little bit of love. The Illuminator Radiant Perfecting Primer and Finisher. This is kind of like a little more subtle strobe cream from MAC. This works beautifully underneath foundation. It has a little bit of a glow to it, but not a heavy one. It's just going to moisturize and make the skin look really pretty. If you have drier skin and you crave that illumination boost. This one is quite nice. It's not sticky. It melts into the skin really well. And I do really like this. So Estee Lauder, I love you. I just don't like this one right here. All right, Maybelline. This one is $7.99, which of course, compared to everything else, you're like, wow, what a bargain. But it's still eight bucks. Like it, you're still spending money on this. And I think you'll go through it pretty quickly because I found that I was using quite a bit. And with this type of a primer, you will, you'll just go through it. So this comes in different shades. This is the light medium shade. And it's so strange. Like the concept of this is really cool, but ultimately it does not, like mesh into the skin or melt into the skin enough. So you end up having these areas that are really like lightened and kind of blurred and it just doesn't match up with your foundation. And then my foundation did not sit well on top of it. So that really sucked too. Basically it made me feel ugly. And if a primer does not make you feel better about your foundation, then it's not a good primer for you. And this was just one that I could not like I used it once. Like once was enough for me. I did not go back for more. There was nothing else to figure out. I was just like, huh, that was a weird makeup day. Never again. So pass on this one. They do have other primers that are great. This isn't it. Um, okay, I didn't put this in my Thailand big, huge uh, try on, which you guys, I could seriously do like two other videos with all of the crap that I brought back from Thailand. There is so much more. So let me know in the comments if you want to see more, cause I have it. This right here is the face blur pore vanishing makeup base in green. And the reason that I bought this and I tested it out while I was in Thailand was because even though I was using like SPF, 
5,000, I still got some sun on my face. And I tried to not be like directly in the sun. Like I had like my dorky visor on, like I was just kind of like, I don't want to age, shield me. So long story short, I did get some sun. We were out on a boat one day and I'm like in and out of the water on the beach, back in the boat, like that whole thing. And I noticed that my nose was getting like bright red and around here was getting bright red. And I'm like, dang it, this just ruins your whole look. Just like, even if you're doing like a no makeup makeup thing, you wake up, you look in the mirror and you're like red and I don't like it. So I got this and it has a green tint to it, which will cancel out redness. And I thought it would be fabulous and I put it on. It was not fabulous. It just pilled on the skin and then it left this very bizarre kind of sick looking tint on the skin. So it really didn't cancel things out. It just made it look even more awful. So this was not for me. The texture was just a bit too puffy where there is a fine line with these kind of um, pore filling, pore blurring type products. Like this one right here, I barely dip into with my finger and I like press, 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 press. And then I feel like that's enough. If you get into something that's a little bit too whipped and does not want to sink into the skin, what happens is you'll put on your foundation and bits of it will kind of ball up and it'll be a disaster. So that happened using this one right here. So beyond it being green and kind of a strange color, it just did not want to sit on my skin. So uh, for those of you curious about Marizeka green base, it's a pass. Okay, I have something from Catrice. Now their foundations have made their way into like my top favorites. I love the HD foundation. I love, I think it's called HD. It's like a 24 hour wearing foundation. So good. Um, I obviously love their concealers. I've talked about that a bunch. Love their cream eyeshadows. I mean, Catrice has such great makeup, but with any brand, they're not gonna get every single thing right for every single person. So this right here is the Nude Glow Primer and I've never looked greasier in my life. Like I put this on and put on my normal foundation because that's how I like to test a primer is use a foundation that I know and love. I just looked oily. Like I, I looked immediately, like not just in my T-zone, it just kind of like brought oil out everywhere. And I was like, no way, like what is this? So this has a slight tint to it. It is very liquidy. And here's the danger with, you know, illuminating primers and primers that hydrate is you can walk that line where it's a little bit too much and it ends up making you a grease ball. Now, something like the Estee Lauder one, this just makes you look balanced and fresh and like you have hydration and plumpness in the skin. And to me, that is the effect that I want, not oily, reflective greasiness. Do you know what I'm saying? So there are two different things that happen with illuminating, hydrating primers, and that's the trouble. So yeah, there we have it, you guys. That is it for the primers that I am getting rid of, that I am breaking up with, that I do not like, and I thought I would just kind of sit down and kick back and tell you why. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know what to do. You do know what to do, right? Like hit the thumbs up button because that means that you liked it. And then I make more videos, similar, kind of. Okay, I'm gonna go, I love you so much. I am here Monday through Friday every day at 10 a.m. PST, so I hope you come back and hang out with me. If you have not subscribed, please take a moment and subscribe, then turn your notifications on and I will see you soon. All right, have a good one, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Mwah.